Are you struggling to produce and publish content consistently? Well, stay tuned because I have some tips that'll help you out. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Boss Tip Thursday. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. Here I share resources and tips on mindset, self-growth, business productivity. So if those topics are something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification for new videos every Monday and Thursday. Publishing quality content is important so that you can grow an audience, so that you can be a go-to expert around your topic and your business, but it has to be published consistently. One of the ways to do that is to have a bank of content ideas at hand, which is what we talked about in the previous episode of Boss Tip Thursday, so make sure you check that out, the part one to this video, if you haven't already. After that, you must also have a plan of how you're going to execute this content on the consistent basis. That's what we're going to talk about today. I have five practical tips to help you organize your workflow so that you can plan, produce, and publish your content consistently. First tip that I have for you is to create a content calendar. A content calendar is used by most established bloggers and YouTubers and social media influencers. It's really no different than your regular personal calendar. It's just a place where you schedule your content in advance and all the steps that it's going to take to have a finished product. Having a content calendar is important because when you plan in advance, you tend to produce more quality content. Plus, you'll be less overwhelmed and stressed out because if you wait till the day that you need to publish a content to start producing it, it will be too overwhelming. So if you have it planned in advance, you'll be in much better shape. Content calendars can get complex. Some people use it to plan an entire year worth of content on all platforms, but it can be basic too. It's your choice. You can use an app that you are already using for other tasks like Google Docs and Google Calendar, spreadsheets, Evernote, or anything like that. You can even use your paper planner that you use already for other tasks. Right now, I'm using Trello just because I like that it's a collaborative software. I can set up my entire process there and then I can give access to other people so they can help me out with that process. Check out the video Trello Power Ups. I share a little bit more about how this process goes in that video. The second tip that I have for you is to create a workflow. A workflow is just a sequence of steps that are going to take you from point A, no content, to point B, a fully produced content. Sort of like an outline that you can use again and again, that you can work off of to make sure that everything goes well. When you have a well-produced and refined workflow, you will be less overwhelmed and less stress also because you can focus on one small step at a time. And eventually, when you're ready to hire help for your business, you will have this outline that you can just hand to them and then they can follow it step by step without making too many mistakes or overlooking something. A workflow is something that can be refined over time. So to start, next time that you write a blog post or sit down to produce a video, start documenting the steps you take from start to finish. Once you've done this a couple of times, your workflow will start to come together. Tip number three is to optimize that workflow. Once you have your workflow outlined, use it every time you start to produce the content. Use a time tracker to time how long each step is taking. What gets measured gets managed. So when you know exactly how long everything is taking you, it'll be clear where there's room for improvement. And then you can evaluate it so that you can cut back wherever possible. Oftentimes, we just do things on autopilot without ever stopping to see how things can be improved. Evaluate your workflow and ask yourself these questions. What can be outsourced? What can be eliminated? How can I make this faster? 
how can I start to automate things? If you just stop and ask yourself these questions from time to time and pay attention, it'll be clear where you can cut back on time on certain tasks. When I went through this process myself, I looked at my workflow, I time tracked everything, and I asked myself these questions. Some of the things that I came up with were to have templates for my thumbnails. So have three to four variations of templates so that way when you uh, make a video, you don't have to start creating a design from scratch and choose some default colors and fonts that you can go to time and time again so that when you start designing graphics for your social media or your blog or anything it'll be much easier to just choose from a couple than from a long list of fonts that they give you these are just a couple things that may have been obvious to other people but it wasn't obvious to me but when you stop and just look and ask the questions, a lot of things that should have been obvious will start to come to the surface. Tip number four is to theme your content. I talked about this a little bit in part one of this video where you create buckets for your different content, but I think it's worth repeating again. A bucket of content is basically a category or a theme. When you do this and you separate your content into different categories, it'll be a lot easier to choose what to blog about or what to make a video about when it comes time to start producing that content. Plus, it'll help you space out your content and add variety without losing track of what the main objective is. If you have a makeup channel, your buckets can be reviews celebrity makeup or makeup basic 101. You can also have like a series, kind of like this channel, Boss Tip Thursday. Marie Forleo has Q&A Tuesdays. If you are a health coach, you can have exercise with me Mondays. Tip number five is to batch your content. Batching is the hugest time saver of all because you are already ready and it's easier to just produce a couple pieces at a time. So if you're writing four blog posts, instead of doing keyword research for all four, just do it one time. Instead of creating four graphics, do them all at once because you're already in that mindset and you should try to avoid switching modes too often. When you stay in one single mode, you already have momentum for that so you can produce it quicker. The important thing with batching is to be prepared. Make sure you have enough time to crank out this content. Make sure your camera's charged, that you've done the previous research, search, make sure everything is set to go so that when it comes time to batching, you can just sit down and do the work. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope these five tips help you organize and start refining your workflow so that you can produce your content consistently. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about any of this or if you have any tips for us to become more efficient with producing content. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful and share it with someone who may need it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.